Hey, Real Life Traders from around the world. What's going on? It's me, Jeremy. I'd like to introduce some with reallifetrading.com. We're doing absolutely fantastic. So the market is closed. Let's check out the SPY and then hop into some other stocks. Realistically, pretty normal day. Shout out to my good buddy, Johnny Guarco, for snagging two and a half R's on SPY. Uh, it was a black candle gapping down today. What type of gap is that? That is a retest gap. Did we retest? Why, yes, we did. We did, in fact, retest. Nice little fill of the gap. Uh, so what's going to happen from here? Well, my guess is that uh, one of two things happen. We here's one. So number one, we probably do something like that, uh, which you know is likely. And then number two, we trade a little bit higher and then we rotate down some and make a relative low uh, around here somewhere. And then when that happens, uh, we start potentially bouncing off of the 100 simple as it gets a little bit closer on the spy. So here's the 100 simple on the SPY and uh, down there at 227. But realistically, we're just hanging out, doing our thing, trading sideways. We still have not closed below 232.76 or above 235.51, meaning I still have zero position on the SPY, waiting for something to happen. Here's the IWN for those of you who know about credit spreads. It was a great day to get into a spread today as it gapped down a little bit and then traded higher. We talked about on Friday, 127, 126 bull put spread for April, which is all the way the heck down here. And that might be, uh, that might work out just fine potentially for a 13% return on your investment in the next month or so on the IWN. So we'll be watching that to see exactly what plays out. But so far, I mean, we're one day in, <laughs> so we'll find out what happens. But again, if uh, the IWM does close below the low of today, something like this, you know, tomorrow, the next two or three days, yes, that will be pretty bearish. And then of course, if we start making higher highs and higher lows, well, you can't argue that today's candle doesn't look pretty bullish on the IWM. Here's Apple, took some AAPL, nothing new or dramatically interesting on Apple. We gapped down right to the 20 and what did we do? We b -b 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 bounced right off of it. So black candle gapping down, what type of gap is that? It's a retest gap and we did retest very nicely today. So Apple doing its thing, Ray has a, a put sale. I had a covered call, I, you see a bunch of question marks up there. I thought about doing it, never did on Apple, so we'll kind of leave that one alone. Speaking of spreads, here's Netflix. Uh, the 136, 135 bull put spread for April week one looks fine. But then on the flip side of that, the 110, 111 bear call spread for BABA, we'll see. I'll be watching it very closely, but if it closes above this 109-ish area in the next two or three days, I'll probably exit, maybe unravel. We will see. Two other things to talk about, so Snapchat, SNMP up big today, Snapchat. Uh, a nice new white soldier with volume. So watch Snapchat to go higher. Uh, if it pulls back tomorrow, I think that'd be a buying opportunity, honestly, uh, and it could pop. Or if we gap above the high of today, we missed a two R trade on Snapchat today by one American penny. Uh, it's not the first time that's happened. In fact, on Friday, I missed a three R trade on Snapchat by a few cents. At least I think it was Friday. Friday or Thursday. Anyway, here was the setup intraday so the uh this is the chart that we took in the morning trading room and you'll notice a high of the day break i mean really this is pretty classic high of the day break here's your triangle pattern here's volume just wanted this and this right that's what we teach all the time every day nothing special about that at all targets were the pre-market highs here and here which it did hit so when snapchat rolled over it came to 233.89 and then bounce, missed the entry by a penny. Here was that five minute chart, by the way, and uh, coming in. So this was the entering candle, uh, the one I was showing right there. That was it, the one with the volume. And again, the low of this candle was uh, 23.89. So one penny on miss on Snapchat, but regardless, I will be watching for some bullish continuation. I still bearish, I'm still bearish longer term, as far as the analysis, thinking that Snapchat does go lower, but I have been wrong before on some things, so if Snapchat continues to go higher, why not make some money and let's trade it bullish on Snapchat. And if it never makes it below 17 by June the 3rd, then I lose the bet. Here's some other stocks that people have been very interested in. Here's HTGM, Molecular Diagnostics. Huge gap, a 200% move on Friday. And we did have some real life traders snag some R's on that on Friday, so great job, Ryan and Grant. Um, HTGM, 
Shocking, right? White candle gapping up. What type of gap is that? Retest gap. What do we do today? We're retesting. So here's the hourly chart. This stuff works, guys, all the time. Here's the hourly time frame on HTGM with the extended hours turned on. And you'll notice it looks a little bit like a double top and or a potential channel forming depending on your insights. Here's the support. Here's the resistance. Watch for one of two things to happen over the next two to three days. I'm thinking it's gonna be this one. So this is the purple line. I think we'll do something like this over the next two or three days. Um, and then over the next few weeks, we'll just continue to go lower. That's just what I think. That's what most quote unquote penny socks like this one do. Uh, however, we could always bounce and continue higher. So I will be watching for any some kind of signs of bullishness. And if we can move bullish, sure, I'll take it bullish. Here is the uh, daily chart though. And the reason I think that we're probably gonna go lower is because there have been, well, a few times in the past where we had a really, really big pop and then we went lower. You can probably see them, but I'll point to them with arrows here, 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 and there. All five of those times we popped big and then we ended up rolling over. Is it gonna happen again? More than likely, but we'll see. I'll watch it for a little bit of a bullish pop. Speaking of another cheaper stock, here is ticker symbol IDRA. And IDRA, uh, breaking out of resistance. My buddy Jason has been in this one for a few days. He alerted us to it because of the good volume increase right here. Nice bullish gap and go on that day. Nice gap on that day. Nice bullish gap and go on that day. So it was a pennant for the last few days on IDRA. So here's the pennant pattern and uh, it's breaking out with volume. So if you're looking at playing IDRA, a lot of traders are in with a stop at 2.22, next target $3.28, and then from there $3.81 on IDRA. Here is Chesapeake Energy, ticker symbol CHK. A few traders requesting Chesapeake. Chesapeake, uh, two things I'll talk about really quick. You had a very nice morning star reversal over the last three days on Chesapeake Energy. Here it is, right cha. And some traders got triggered and bullish as of Friday. If you did, cool, looks good. This is one of those beautiful times where you never know what's gonna happen. Is it gonna bounce or is it gonna go lower? No idea. But here's a fact, in my opinion, on a weekly chart, if CHK breaks lower, this is a beautiful resting pattern. Right here, stair step, pin it, however you wanna draw it. If it breaks bullish, cool. If it breaks and closes below 482, it is gonna go lower. Make sure you're protected in some form or fashion. Speaking of fashion, here's APOP, which actually has nothing to do with fashion at all. Celotech Biotechnology. Uh, according to Investopedia, this is a company that has um, created the first or successfully done the first stem cell transplant. I know that this is a, uh, a very invested subject. A lot of people have talked about this for a long time. And ticker symbol APOP had a huge move today based on the news. Great bullish gap and go, a lot of volume. Obviously gonna be a very speculative investment, meaning do not put your life savings into this trade. Make sure whatever your risk is, you're comfortable losing that particular amount. Watch it closely on the hourly and the daily. But again, this is the daily chart, beautiful gap, looks great on the weekly. Everything about it looks solid. Here's the hourly time frame, and it looks like a nice pennant. So again, I will say don't be afraid to trade it, uh, just make sure you know what your risk is. Make sure you're comfortable with your risk uh, and understand that this thing can gap massively. So the reason I'm calling it a speculative trade is because sometimes if I'm like, you know what, I want to get in on this. I don't know how it's going to move. I want to make a little bit of money. I'll have a smaller R potentially on something like that because if it does gap hugely against me, I don't want to lose more than a, an R if it's... Uh, you know, let's say Thursday comes out like, hey guys, we're just kidding, psych, didn't work. And then it's down here at $1, you know, and you lose a lot. You don't really want that to happen. So just something to keep in mind on APOP, but absolutely one to watch or at least put on your radar. Speaking of radar, here's Tesla, TSLA. And Tesla up 2.68% today. A lot of traders happy about this one as the a lot of traders are in spreads or some kind of put sale. After this beautiful double bottom, close above the neckline, retest of the neckline, and then a continuation higher. Speaking of, Thursday was a uh, new white soldier, so here was the Thursday candle right here. Nice little retest of that neckline, and then Friday was also a new white soldier candle, which is simply a white candle that opened and closed above the Friday black candles closed. Here's a resistance on Tesla, and I probably wouldn't be shocked if we pull back sometime tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and then bounce into 280. That's the next target, at least in my opinion, on Tesla. One other news story is Dow and uh, Dow and DuPont have um, 
have announced that uh, they got over a regulatory hurdle for their merger and it has been conditionally approved by the European Commission. So there's a lot of political words hidden in there like regulatory, hurdle, merger, received, conditional, regulatory, approval. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so Dow and DuPont. We do have a few real life traders who actually work for these companies. Uh, here's Dow Chemical, D-O-W. And if you look at this on a weekly chart, I mean, just massively gorgeous technical analysis on this stock. Had a phenomenal distribution phase here for a long time on Dow Chemical. Really nice distribution, a breakout, all time high. What did it do? Retest of old resistance, new support, and it bounced. So on both DOW and Dow Chemical, um, that's the same company. Dow Chemical and DuPont, take a little DD. Uh, they're both pretty much here at the all time high area. And I don't know exactly how the merger is gonna impact the stock, the stock price, the stock ticker, or the companies in general. My guess is one's gonna buy the other, likely DuPont getting bought out or merging with Dow Chemical, I believe is the, uh, the acquisitional news story. And then from there, Dow Chemical probably and more than likely does continue higher. Looking at the technicals, it would be hard for it not to with that beautiful distribution phase, all time high breakout, never been higher. A big pullback could come in and then a bounce, but longer term, I like it for anyone looking at those particular stocks. Just keep in mind they're at all time high levels. Uh, I wish I knew a little bit more, but a lot of traders have been asking or looking at or analyzing Dow Chemicals and DuPont over the last few months uh, and really years on those two particular stocks. So hopefully this is helpful. If you have any requests for Wednesday's Real Life Stock Review, make sure to get them to me, jeremy at reallifetrading.com. That's my email address. Or you can post them in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are amazing. Until next time, love life, love life, and trade it. Bye.